Hey guys, it's Alan Yor. I have a review for Fallout Shelter today, which is a pretty old game now, I know, but that's the thing with my channel. The perfect word to describe my channel is a patient gamer. Uh, sometimes I'll make an exception to that. For example, I just reviewed the Elden Ring DLC yesterday. Um, but in general, that's a bad idea because when you review stuff that just come out, you are, or not just review, but if you play games the second they come out, uh, you're literally paying the most amount of money for the worst version of the product because they're going to get updated over the years, there's going to be balance changes, etc. So, but Elden Ring was an exception just because From Software is proven to have 10 out of 10 quality with everything they do, but yeah. So, Follow Shelter is also relevant because of the Fallout TV series, which I have not seen yet, but I plan to. And in general, I just want to have a review for every single Fallout game at some point. Uh, that's probably going to be a goal that's not going to be completed for a long time, but at some point I'd like to do that. So Fallout Shelter is a free-to-play mobile game that has been ported over to console and PC, and it's pretty much a perfect port. There's no issues with it at all. It, it runs very well. It's not a problem, even though the game was designed for uh, you know, iOS and Android touchscreen controls. So in this game, you are the uh, overseer of a vault, and uh, of course, this is in the Fallout universe, so the surface of the Earth has is uh, kind of a wasteland. It has radiation, dangerous monsters, raiders, and bandits everywhere. So it's not somewhere you can feasibly live. So that's why humanity has a bunch of vaults around um, that they actually created in anticipation for an event like this. So you get to be the overseer of your very own vault. You get to um, recruit and attract uh, new dwellers from outside the vault, you get to actually kind of breed them. I wouldn't normally use the word breed to describe humans, but in this case I think it's pretty accurate. You get to like breed your own dwellers, you get to choose their names and the babies' names and all that. Um, you get to customize all these dwellers with weapons, outfits, you can train their special stats. So it's a surprisingly in-depth game for um, for a free-to-play mobile game. And uh, the real objective of it is to make as large of a vault as possible and uh, there is eventually a limit but it will take you quite a while to get to that limit uh, and you also want to get as high as you want to max out the population which i think is 200 dwellers but i could be wrong could be more um so yeah but uh you can send them on quests you can send them to explore the wasteland or you can just keep them at home um you know as <laughs> breeders uh or you can uh, have them work in producing electricity, food, water, whatever resources you need. So, Follow Shelter, positive section. It's one of the best mobile free-to-play games ever. I would not call it one of the best free-to-play games ever, period, but I would call it one of the best mobile free-to-play games. So, the, the reason it's a great mobile game is because this mobile game respects your time and money. I've spent over 80 hours in this game in total, like that's active playtime, that was like the game was physically running on screen. And obviously there's a lot more time off screen because the game will run passively, but that's 80 hours where I did not feel pressured to get a time skipper or some currency with real money or anything. I believe I spent a total of $7 in total of the 80 plus hours and that was not because I needed to, it's because I just wanted to support the game. That was a very long time ago when it just came, first came out. So, yeah, just the fact that it's a mobile free-to-play game that you do not have to spend a penny in at any point, huge thumbs up for that. It's it's a true free-to-play game. Like, you're genuinely not going to be missing out on anything if you don't spend money, which is very rare for a mobile game, especially. Um, other reasons to like it, it respects the follow IP very well. There's lots of little references. The fact that the special stats are actually there and they have functions both in the vault and outside the vault. So the special stats have different bonuses for, um, you know, on a quest, if you have higher perception, you have higher chance to trigger VATs, but if you are, um, actually I don't know if perception has one inside the, the, the vault, but for example, luck in the vault will increase your chance to get caps when successfully collecting resources, and it will also increase your chance of caps and items when you're outside the vault as well. So just the fact that the game's bothering to be that much in-depth and ha it offers the RPG elements that Fallout fans are familiar with, again, in a mobile free-to-play game, is, is very impressive and it feels to me like they're going above and beyond. Um, 
the game's highly addicting, very engaging. I'd say the early to mid game is very strong. You feel like you're making progress. You'll get like emotionally attached to a specific few dwellers that you remember when they were born. You specifically chose their name. You put them in like you you put them in the the training rooms to get all their special stats to maximum. Now they're this level fifty badass with legendary gear, and there there is a real risk of death in this game. So you get kind of attached to them. And on that note, there's also this game offers the unique approach of like you kind of get to play God. Like you kind of get to like you can evict people if you feel like they're consuming your resources and not pulling their own weight. Um, you you get to play God with these people, so. It's sort of like a psychopath role-playing game, I guess, but it's just for fun. It's for shits and giggles, obviously. They're all just pretend, digital, non-existent people. So that's a unique angle, and I find a lot of fun just kind of uh, playing with playing God of 200 human beings who are living in a very bad situation in the, in the world. So for the negative section, um, there's kind of two. The first one is the end game. The end game to me is... Uh, very repetitive, very stale, and um, you'll reach a point fairly quickly if you consider 80 hours quick, which, I mean, I've played other free-to-play games for 20 times the amount of 80 hours, so that kind of is to me. But yeah, you're, you're going to hit a point where you're like, you've already seen and done, it, done everything, all the quests are going to be repeats of each other, the death, the alpha death claw is going to be the hardest enemy in the game, or it could be the bandit overlord that throws the nuclear grenade, whatever. You're going to you're going to quickly get run out of brand new things to do and you'll kind of be sitting there questioning yourself why am I still playing at this point. So the end game, not the best. It's not the worst, but it's just not the best either. Not not a game that I can play forever and ever and ever like some other free-to-play games. Like I can play Dota 2 forever and ever and ever, literally, unless they shut down the servers because it just has that replay value to it. Um, but this game just doesn't really have that same sort of addic addictive end game that other free-to-plays might have but it's still much better than your average mobile game specifically. I want to say that when I'm ranking this this when I'm ranking this video or this game out of 10, I'm I'm going off a mobile game right now. I'm not going off a free to play game. If this was a free to play PC exclusive game for example, I would probably go like a 6 or 7 out of 10. It's not that impressive. But just the fact that it's a mobile game that originated on Apple devices, that's changing the score a lot for me. Uh, just because I've played a lot of trash <laughs> on the iOS store. So the other negative is that, so when you play games like this, this is for like a certain audience. I don't know what genre to call exact, exactly, maybe just like simulator, but these kind of games that you can passively progress and not pay a lot of attention to, I play a lot of those and I'm not the only one that plays a lot of those, and they missed a very important key feature among gamers who, who like these low effort sort of passive progression games. There's no way to easily optimize anything. So if you're trying to, uh, maybe you have a new idea of a defense vault layout, like, you know, if you put the nuclear reactor as your very first room after the uh, vault dweller door, and then you have an overseer's office afterwards, that is the objective best defense layout for the very beginning. But to actually get to that point, you're going to have to rip and tear the entire vault to nothing. And you're going to have to manually assign all of these dwellers to other rooms while you're ripping it apart. Because they're, you can't delete rooms when they're connected to other ones. So the, the vault can go all the way, it can go for a very long way to the bottom. But to actually make any real changes to the top, you're going to have to shred everything from the down to the very top. And it's going to waste a lot of your caps. Um, also another note on the end game, I felt like my caps were just kind of useless because I didn't have anything to spend them on anymore. I had all the rooms, I have all the upgrades, so really caps don't have any purpose for me except for reviving dwellers, but I have a surplus at them, so getting caps was eventually pointless because I just had too many of them. Um, what else? So the thing with the optimization is, let's say you have a favorite dweller and you want to put on your best possible, best in slot weapon and outfit onto your favorite dweller. Good luck with that, because you're going to have to sort through 200 different dwellers and all of the various weapons and stuff they have. There's no easy way to sort them by damage or anything like that. You're just going to have to wing it or pray that you get something new and you remember to put it on that new one. So there's no easy way to optimize anything, and that's kind of important for a passive progression game like this where a lot of the work is done for you offline. So I'm going to give Fallout Shelter a 9 out of 10. I think it's a very high quality mobile free-to-play game. It does not 
force you to spend money. There are no, I mean, there are time skippers, but there's no reason to use them because everything is very reasonable and uh, the game respects your time. The game rewards you for active play, but doesn't punish you for wanting to be passive and prefer offline only play. So yeah, it's, it's very good. I highly recommend it if you've never played it. So thanks so much for watching this review and I will see you next time.